Raghu, I heard that you know there are rare cases of infant uh, uh, inborn metabolic disorders, and uh, it is very difficult to treat them. And uh, also that you know I have heard that you have uh, formulated uh, like you know special supplement for treating these cases. And can you like you know elaborate more on this? Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, you see, uh, these inborn uh, metabolic disorders are very rare. Uh, one in 10,000 to 40,000 to lakh and all that, but they do happen. And when they happen, uh, most of the time it goes undiagnosed uh, because they have not been screened for uh, genetic disorders. See, typically what is this inborn metabolic disorder? The inborn, uh, in, uh, infant is born with uh, one or two enzymes not being able to uh, express. Okay, so they lack certain enzymes, certain digestive enzymes. Because they lack those digestive enzymes, whatever food that we eat, be it even mother's milk or the weaning food or the infant food, whatever food they take, all these foods contains either an amino acid or a fatty acid or some type of sugars or minerals and vitamins. But when you do not have a certain enzyme, particularly for the energy giving nutrients like protein and its components like amino acids, fats and fatty acids, sugars, starch and sugar components, when you do not have an enzyme, for example, you take for example glucose, the enzyme is glucase, lactose, enzyme is lactase. So like that there is a, for every nutrient there is an enzyme, enzymes are called molecular scissors. They cut up and break, break it open and digest them into the our system, you know, to release energy and use them for muscle building or whatever. But what happens when an infant born doesn't have a gene? for the expression of this particular enzyme, then those ch infants are considered as having, you know, these inborn metabolic disorders. Uh, the popular one, I mean, the very well-known, uh, uh, you know, infant metabolic disorder is the PKU, phenylalanine ketonuria. Uh, you would see this even when you, whenever there is a soft drink with uh, artificial uh, sweetener added, then they say, not for children with PKU. Because there's a uh, you know reaction yeah, to that. that yeah. yeah. So what happens? So there are children born with uh, these disorders. Sometimes they are wrong. They are not diagnosed properly, and they are treated wrongly. Sometimes good doctors, pediatrician, would be able to uh, subject them for a gene screening and able to find out yes, this particular gene is lacking. This particular enzyme is not being expressed in the infant's body. Then the only solution is to design a food that is devoid of that particular nutrient that the infant lacks the enzyme for. Got so it. that is the way you need to design. So I am involved in giving the, you know, this kind of uh, nutrition formulations for infants born with metabolic disorders. And we work with some of the leading hospitals in the country. What I understand from these leading institutions is that, uh, that we are the only people you know, I, uh, you know, involved in giving solutions to these metabolic disorders. I'm quite happy and proud about that. Uh, but I know that this is a serious problem. Sometimes I wonder that we have large institutions in the country, right. large hospitals in the country, and why not that we, you know, wh how is it that we have, haven't been able to provide a good solution mm -hmm. for these uh, inborn metabolic disorders? Because right now, anywhere, anybody in the country or even outside the country, mm -hmm. if they have a child suffering from inborn metabolic disorders, mm -hmm. we would be happy to help them okay. in formulating. Uh, I understand that uh, being, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, a scientific community and being able to formulate at a low price and things like that, it does help people, parents, uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a really, you know, very difficult situation for parents who have a baby with uh, this kind of disorder. And we are working with large number of uh, institutions in the country, uh, the leading ones in the country, and we are being referred to. Oh, you know, and then we formulate and sometimes this has to be formulated and designed uh, specific to the defect, the gene specific defect that the infant is suffering from. Uh, okay. So we do that. Uh, of course, there are about 15 of, uh, of these uh, inborn metabolic disorders. Uh, PKU is one, MSUD, maple syrup urine disorder, uh, tyrosinemia. Uh, so like this, there are uh, amino acid based uh, sugar-based, fatty acid-based uh, disorders. So accordingly, in, in line with the defect, the defective gene, uh, we have, uh, uh, you, know, um, lo you know, mastered this uh, art of uh, formulating food for the inborn metabolic disorders. We would be very happy to help anybody out there, uh, those who have a kid with this metabolic disorder, uh, they can certainly contact us. We would be able to help them out. That's very nice of yeah. you, Raghu. 
Um, one more question is that you know, let's say uh, one uh, and first, firstly, like you know, I would like to ask, let's say if somebody does not go through gene screening, so uh, there is no way to identify something like this, right? No, see, even in expert hands, see, they would always attribute it to so many other reasons. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, th of course, today the gene screening facilities are available in the country. Of course, say, abroad, whenever a child is born, they are normally screened for a few defective genes. Uh. Uh, but particularly in this case, when you know that, that the very mother's milk is building like a toxin, you know, because of the amino acid, it builds like a toxin, and then it, it sometimes leads to coma, and they won't recover. So when they, when they see a situation like this, a good expert hand would see this case and then see, you know, oh, this is the time to look at this uh, enzyme profiling and gene profiling and be able to do it. There are today a good number of, uh, uh, right here in Bangalore, there is a center called Center for Human Genetics. Uh, one of the finest institute in Hyderabad, we have CCMB, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. So these centers are giving very good service. Uh, in fact, unlike the you know other laboratory, I don't know the, how expensive the gene screening lab, or the private labs are, but these are government labs. The you know the Center for Human Genetics. Uh, I would say that they can approach them and you know subject the kid and get in touch with the doctor and and uh, see that whenever they, they face a problem like this. Uh, it is better that they screen the child for the gene defect. Otherwise, the wrong treatment, you know, uh, wrong, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, the right remedy for a wrong disease or whatever, you know, it's going to be a mismatch, and this, this can exactly. be a problem. So I would say screen them for them for this uh, uh, defect using some of these best uh, known centers, and then uh, if they get in touch with us, we will be able to help uh, with the right uh, recipe, you know, for for the defective disorder. Got it. Yeah. So the other question that I have is that uh, let's say like you know infant is diagnosed and then like you know it, like you uh, probably design a food supplement for that patient. So how long do they have to take it, or no. is, is that going to be the case for their entire life? It's a, it's a lifetime uh, question because okay. what happens? See, unless in a future there may be a stem cell therapy, there may be a germline therapy. We don't know. People, it's possible that there could be today they are talking about emerging science in terms of you know being able to edit a gene through a new technology called CRISPR uh, CAS9 or the zinc finger nucleases and all that where you know you know that there is a defect properly gene diagnosis at the embryo level or at the fetus level and then be able to edit but it's very futuristic I'm talking about but as of now you cannot engineer uh, a defective gene uh, unless you know stem cell comes in or the gene editing comes in then probably I would say that you will have science will have some answers for these uh, uh, problems okay yeah but I strongly feel now that you know that every parent needs to know about this problem because like you know it it, it kind of like you know gives them an understanding like you know this there is a possibility of yes. probably their kid going through this absolutely right. absolutely of course you know you see uh, I mean uh, in situations like that I mean they, sh they need not lose hope uh, they can make sure that uh, uh, we can provide you know solutions and uh, and a baby thrives well Right. Maybe thrives well. Uh, of course, you know, see, these solutions have their own context and uh, constraints, uh, but still there is a solution. And this is the only solution. Because the only thing is that, yes, you do not have an enzyme, you need to eat food that, uh, uh, that, that does not have the nutrient uh, that you don't have an enzyme for. So okay. that's the only way that you can safeguard and bring your, uh, you know, uh, normal uh, blood profile uh, by eliminating uh, the nutrient.